Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the new 3D transform tool in GIMP 2.10. Okay, so on my desktop, I've got this folder and inside this folder, I've got one picture which I downloaded from Unsplash. I'll put a link to that in the YouTube description. Let's go ahead and open up GIMP software. We'll go to File, New and we'll select the width at 1920 and the height at 1080p. We'll click Advanced and set the resolution to 72 dpi and fill with transparency and click OK. So we've got a blank canvas now. Let's drag and drop that picture we downloaded into GIMP software. We'll hold down the control key, use the middle mouse button to pan the canvas. We just want to reduce the size of this. Let's press Shift and S. That will allow us to use the scale tool. We'll set the opacity to around 50% and we'll scale it in. But I don't want to scale it all the way. I want to leave a gap around the edge here. I just want to sort out the alignment of this image a bit as well. So we'll scale it to around this sort of size, I think would be good. Let's click scale and then we'll hold the control key, zoom back in and we'll set the opacity all the way back up. Let's click on the move tool here and we'll just drag this so we can try and center it out. You can see it's a slightly offline. Something like this should be pretty good. We'll align it around this sort of size. Let's zoom in a little bit. So I think this will look pretty good. So we want to use the perspective, uh, sorry, the 3D tool in GIMP. So let's take some text. We'll click on the text tool. I'm going to click on the canvas here and just type in, let's just type in GIMP, for example, right? G-I-M-P. I'm going to select that text and I want to make it a white color for now. Let's make it white. So we've got this text here. Let's click on the move tool and let's drag that text up. It's just some simple text. You can use any font you like. You can type in your name. Try and keep it quite a small word if possible, uh, which will help us in this tutorial. So we're going to use the 3D tool. Okay, let's go ahead and click on this GIMP text here so you can see it's highlighted with this yellow dot. Let's go to the tools here and we'll select the 3D transform tool. So when we select that, there's a few different options in here, right? So you've got unified interaction, you've got constraint, you've got uh, the Z axis and you've got the local frame. So let's try and understand what these things do. If we click on the Z uh, axis and then click on the image, when we rotate this is going to rotate it like this you can see it in this circular path right like this just like this and if we rotate something and we don't want to be in that particular direction we can click on the reset now you can enable or disable these options either by ticking them as default or you can click on the image and hold down the control key so when you click on the image and hold down the control key you can constrain it that way as well so if you if you notice if I, if I hold down or let go of the control key, this option here is enabled or disabled, right? Like that, but you must click on the image first, hold down the left mouse button, then hold down the control key to constrain it. Once you've done that once, you can let go and turn the control, uh, the constraint on and off using the control key. Let's click the reset button and you've got unified interaction here. This one's quite interesting. Um, we can actually move the object in space here, right? So think of it as like 3D space, but we're moving it from the left to the right. And we can constrain that as well by holding down the shift key. So when we hold down the shift key and start to move left and right, I can't move the object up anymore. I can only move it left or right by holding down the shift key. If I start to move the object upwards and then hold down the shift key, then I'm moving it in this direction constraint as well, right? So this is like um, constraining where we move the object in the horizontal or vertical so that's quite a useful tool to have as well um, this constraint here and unified interactions we're just moving this object around the screen basically right on the left and right up and down and then if we hold down the control key we can move the object almost like in this 3d view right using the constraint and also using the control key so we can um, almost like zoom in and out in terms of perspective and we actually want to do that so let's click the reset button we'll turn on the unified interaction and let's turn on the z-axis control as well and we're just going to click on the object and move it towards this floor like something around here in fact we'll move it to about this sort of position I think will be good let's turn these options off and we're going to turn on local frame Now, local frame acts a bit like a plane on the floor so when we start to click on this object, we can actually start to rotate it and you can see we can rotate the plane, right? And we can hold down the control key to ro to constrain the rotation as well. Uh, we can click reset to bring it back to its original state. And when we click local frame, we can 
grab the object and hold down the shift key. Now it's normally the shift one that I use because it's tilting it on this axis. So we want to try and tilt it so that it's kind of in perspective with this floor, right? Something around here. So it looks like it's laying flat on the floor, but it's not really towards the floor. So what we can do is go ahead and turn off this local frame and then turn on unified interaction. And when we hold down the control key, we can actually zoom this object now in and out towards this floor. So we can get it to maybe around here somewhere, which I think will look pretty good, right? So now it looks like this GIMP is written on the floor. It's kind of, that's what we're trying to achieve using this 3D tool. Um, you can do things like turn on the guides. So these guides are already turned on as default and you can increase or decrease the number of squares in there if that helps you to kind of pan out the floor or how it looks like, how it should be like in sort of perspective. I'm going to go through some of these other options. This is really like a little basic beginner's tutorial, uh, but maybe we'll look at some of these other options, more advanced options in a subsequent tutorials. So let's set this back to uh, somewhere around 10, I think would have been good, right? So we, we're done with really sort of laying out this image or this text on the floor. Let's go ahead and click the transform. And now we can see it sort of laying flat on the floor. Um, there's a few other things we can do here, right? So what we can do is um, let's go ahead and duplicate this layer. That's the wisest thing to do. So we'll click a duplicate layer. Let's make three duplicates by clicking on this bottom, this button here. Normally in GIMP, a lot of the times, um, a lot of the things you do in GIMP are what we call destructive edits. So in Photoshop, when you do something like this, it's called non-destructive. So you can easily revert back to the original shape or the image quite quickly. But in GIMP, a lot of the things are committed once you set them, right? So it's nice to have a couple of copies to go back if you make mistakes or you want to change something. Let's go to file save and let's try and do a little bit of something with this text. Let's try a few different options. So let's click on it first of all. Let's right click and do alpha to selection. That will basically put a selection around this text. So you can see these little marching ants. We've got the selection around the text object. Let's go to select uh, and we will shrink the selection. Let's shrink it by around, let's say, five pixels and we'll click OK. So now this, this selection has been reduced. You can say, think of it that way. Then we can pick a color. So let's pick something like maybe, um, let's let's use a, let's see, let's use some sort of like nice light blue color, something like this. We'll click OK, we'll go to our bucket tool and then we can go ahead and click inside of these selections and we can have this nice sort of blue text. We can go to select and we can go to none, right? We can zoom back out and now we've got this GIMP text written on the floor. It could have been a different font. You could have put your company name there. You can take an image of a logo and you can lay it out flat on the floor, right? It doesn't have to be text. It can be a picture as well. You can do exactly the same logic, but use a, a picture as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and disable this top layer. So we've got that version of the GIMP text and let's, uh, we've got two now copies of this GIMP text here. Sometimes it's worth even creating more copies. Let's create a couple more and we'll just hide these ones below. So we're going to just interact with these two. Let's click on this one that sits on the third layer or the second one below this top image, right? This one right here. And we'll go to filter, blur, and we'll go to Gaussian blur. And then we can add some sort of like Gaussian blur to give it some sort of glow. So let's say something around here and we'll click OK. Let's click on our background. You can see there's a bit of a problem here. If we zoom in, you can see that there's these flat lines. Like it's, it's not looking very good, is it? So let's try and fix that. Let's go to, let's press Control Z, or let's go to Edit, uh, Undo Gaussian Blur. Let's click back on that layer. So this is this particular one here. And this is like the bounding box, right? This is like the layer size. And anything outside of there is not going to really work. So what we want to do is go to the Rectangle Select Tool. Let's make a bigger selection around this text. Something like this will be good. Then we can go to Layer and we can do Crop to Selection. So now you can see the bounding box is much bigger. Now we can go back to, we can click on that layer, go back to the filter. Let's go to Blur, Gaussian Blur. And now we can add a much, much bigger Gaussian Blur without it affecting or getting cut or sliced because uh, our selection is much bigger now. All right, so we can experiment with that. We can have some sort of glow effect here. Let's click OK, and then we've got this nice little GIMP text written on the floor, and it's glowing. We can go to Select and go to None. We can remove that selection. And now you can see the text written there, and it's kind of glowing on the floor. And you can go and really experiment with that. It didn't have to be a white text. It could be in a different color. 
uh, we can even go to this top layer we can go to our bucket tool uh, let's do a right click alpha to selection and we've got black here so we can color this in black let's see let's try and color it in black maybe we haven't got black selected there let's select a black color uh, let's try that again and we can fill this text in black here and then we can go to select none and now we've got this black text written you can experiment with it play around with the settings i kind of like the white so i'm just going to undo all of that i prefer the white text i think that looks much better we can just go to select and none and now we've got this white glowing text you can actually go back to the 3d tool so you can click on the 3d tool and then click back on this um, text here and you can actually move it still right so you can um like move the text around still but it's stuck to that plane right it's set to that particular sort of um you can actually modify it as well so you can zoom in and out and do other stuff to it but um normally once you set it up it's kind of what it is until unless you go back and recreate that text and readjust the perspective but you can go in and, and make a other adjustments to it as well in terms of its perspective right in terms of its zoom and how it sits on the on this plane i'm going to click reset because i don't really want to do that let's close this let's click on this move tool and click on the background i think that looks pretty cool kind of like the idea behind it we could click here hold down the shift key let's click on the move tool click on that object uh, we should be able to move it right we can move it uh, we can move this across a little bit and then click on the top one uh, let's click on this here we can move that across a little bit try and get it more centered really um, but you can go and experiment with that i'll leave you to go and experiment with that and play around with the settings and get it perfect for your image okay let's go ahead and click the save button let's press ctrl s let's go to export and we to export our work and we'll just call it 3d tutorials fine let's click export and export there so you can actually do that with pictures as well it doesn't have to be uh, a good example would be maybe using like a png picture maybe i'll do a few more tutorials like this explaining some of the um uh, how to use like uh, images rather than text uh, and maybe we can do something a bit different maybe a different scene and we can uh, experiment with that as well let's save this work let's just close this that's our original image there and then we created this one with this gimp text sort of glowing on the floor and we use the, the 3d tool to, to manipulate that text and lay it sort of flat on this floor right okay so that's how you go about using that 3d uh, transform tool i'll be making a few more more complex tutorials using that particular tool but right now i'm focusing on more basic tutorials doing loads of little sort of bite-sized tutorials and then we'll come back and we'll do some more experiment with gimp uh, using uh, these new tools in this latest version so make sure you download GIMP 2.10.18 if you haven't already done that I'll put a link in the YouTube description showing you how to download uh, that particular new version okay I hope you find this tutorial useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial